I am HSM from National Institute of Informatics. This is my presentation title today. This picture is taken under the, the emergence of the smartphone. So everybody is taking the, the photos and posting those the scenery photos and everything on the, the cyber space. It's quite sophisticated services. And the, one of the, the issues we are seeing is that, for example, the, the bio metric information such as a print, fingerprint and faces may be exposed. That's the privacy issue. Our group is addressing such threat. And the left bottom, you can see the, the glasses to prevent the, the face recognition. And the right bottom is the my fingerprint, um, the photo taken with the, the three meters distance. And the, to detect them and prevent the issues that we are doing some research. These are the, the collaborators in our research. And this is my short bio. Unlike other people in academia, I have actually worked for the, the private sector co corporate lab for 10 years. And I also visited the customers to do the joint development and I'm interested in the basic research but also interested in the how it's socially applied. Therefore, in addition to the, the research, I am very much interested in how we can provide this in the society. First, this is a very big backdrop. This is the, the camera production unit since 1933 to 2016, very long time. The silver bar is the, the film silver halide camera, and blue is a compact digital camera, and the yellow is a smartphone camera. Well, you can't really uh, see the top, and if we draw a line, then this is the, the number. So it's been, well, there were only 40 million uh, when the smartphone emerged, and in 2016, the 1.5 billion smartphones were in the market. and the security and privacy of the image and the video needed to be protected. But in the past, the, the organizations or the, the corporations, they were stipulating some privacy and security policies. But the, the now, uh, everybody's camera is high def and over 20 million pixels. Not always they are aware of the privacy or security concept. And then they share the issue, share the doors of photos. So that's the issues. So let's look at this comprehensively. And the real world, people have the, the very uh, sophisticated high def cameras and the share those photos in the cyberspace. Let me show you several issues. One is the, the ID or well, the face is one of the, the ID and also a guide the way you walk and the fingerprint and voice, doors are recognized as one of the, the identifier and by matching doors, the privacy may be leaked. And another issue is that the camera that is very high def and you take uh, photos from that and from those photos, you can identify the fingerprint, not just the face and also the, the iris of eye and the attackers may pretend that you are the trying to um, spoof. And the, another one is the, the media clones, deep fake or face to face. This is a fake video technologies. Using them in a cyber space, you can spoof yourself as a, another person. These are the three major threats and we try to address them. One is about the real world in order to prevent the recognition and the cyberspace. So this is a technology that I showed you earlier. Another one is that once it's stored in the cyberspace, the anonymization can uh, prevent the matching and also the this uh, biometric side, liveness detection technology, whether it's live or not. That kind of technology is advancing. Another one. Well, I will present this in the last, but uh, this is the, the detection of fake video on the client side. It can detect this. So this person is just the, the compo com composed and created in this cyber space. So it's not the real person. And looking at those technologies, I would like to also touch upon the, the future technologies. First, jamming technologies. 
there are several researches that we have, so I'd like to introduce some of them. The first, the, it's called a privacy visor. The first picture on the title page showed you this photo, and the, the people take pictures here and there, then sometimes the other people's faces are captured, and the, this technology is preventing face detection. First, what's happening here? Well, the face recognition and invasion of privacy, what kind of use cases do we have? Right top, you see A, that means attack. This is what the adversaries think about. And there are several points, and I would like you to pay attention to the, the bottom one. Since 2016, this is happening. The Find the Face application for a smartphone. In Russia, it's launched in 2016. So what did it, it did was that from the, the photos, you can match with the profiling on VK. This is a Russian version of the, the Facebook. And the it looks very fun application with ease of use. And the, right after this launched in 2016, young Russian photographer, well, if you look at the left-hand side of the photo, this is the, the remote capture the photo on the subway by this photographer, and the hundred of them are taken, and the, the he or she used to match them, and the, out of 170 people were identified. So this is partially publicized on the website. So what I want to say here is that back then, the, the this face recognition technology, if used, then the it's not so that difficult to match the face. The VK, Russian version of Facebook, it has the, the target name and the hobbies, address. Those profile is available. With that, you can match from the, the accidentally taken photo and then the, the, this person's name and address may be leaked. To prevent this, before Google Glass was launched, so from the, the 2011 or so, at that time, smartphone was not so penetrated. But once the camera penetrates, then the faces are taken. And if there are multiple faces, those are matched and associated information could be leaked, including the name and who you were with. And we thought about how to prevent this. So camera and the, the cyberspace services, we didn't want to impose enforcement under such difficult environment. We thought about how we can protect the privacy. One number of ideas were that the, maybe we can apply the countermeasures on the side of whom may be taking their photos. This is a privacy visor. So infrared LED was incorporated into the glasses as a near infrared, so you can't really see. CC and CMOS, if they are used, then the, it's recognized in the noise. In the physical world, just like the, the glasses, you can have the communication with humans. But once it's taken in a photo, then the noise is emitted, and the, it can prevent the detection of face. But the light source of the noise, well, depending on the, the placement, it doesn't feel right, so it has to be arranged, and we try to strike the balance to implement these glasses. At that time, the face recognition was represented by the Viola Jones face detector. So within this uh, green squares, you can see the, that these are face, Viola Jones face detectors features. And the in order for the face not to be recognized, we thought about the how we can do this. In the machine learning, adversarial example is very famous, but the, the, at that time there was no such concept, but it's a forerunner concept of this to prevent the, the face recognition, and we researched and researched. And then we see the, the blue area and the red area. Blue, this is a dark 
and the, the red is a light feature, so we find this. And if we find the features, then we can recognize a face. To prevent that, what can we do? So LED only have the, the uh, impact to brighten the dark area. So for the, the blue area, this is a dark feature. So LED light source should be designed in a way that the face recognition cannot recognize the face. So general goggle and 11 LED are mounted and this is the, the privacy visor with the light source and power source. As you can see here, if the it's turned off, this is the, the physical world when you're communicating with others. So you can't really see the light. So it's like the, the normal glasses, but the ones the photos are taken by digital cameras, see and see more doors react to the, the this near infrared. So it will result in a failure of the face recognition. This is a demo video. We are trying to uh, show the, the face real time. If this person turns on, then this uh, green goes off and the, the privacy of this person could be protected. But with this, then the, it will just end up in the, the lab. So later on, the Sabaeshi in Fukui Prefecture, they are famous for glasses, so we had a joint development. So this was uh, commercialized from 2016. LED light source is hard to deal with. So we try to uh, make the, the surface brighter with the technology to prevent the detection. It's from the, the 2016 or rather 2017, it's in the market. And this is more advanced version. So privacy visor idea was quite impactful. So for example, this is a German museum of the, the technology, one of the largest in Europe in 2015. And since then, it's been the permanent exhibit. And right next to private privacy visor, the Google glass so the person who take photos and the person whose picture is taken they are next to each other and this is also at the, the exhibit our computer science idea is expanding in a different area and this is the impact on academia biometrics research well, there are 50 years of the, the research, and our uh, research is cited in the very famous uh, papers in Sabaeshi, Sabae City. Well, that technology was developed by the researchers, and the Sabaeshi, they uh, used their, their our technology to come up with the, the products, and we licensed out, and the, they created the second generation of the glasses and they, they had the crowdfunding for the, the Sabaeshi or Sabaeshiri, and they got the, over 4 million yen, and the, these were implemented product. I think these are commercialized now. As a normal glasses, that's um, left the bottom. If you go in the street, and if you want to prevent somebody taking your photos, then you should just lift the, the um, glasses, then the, the brightness and the reflectance goes up. And with that, face recognition and detection in a cyberspace could be prevented. So this is an example of the, the research project that becomes the, the social implementation. It had the tremendous impact on the different areas. And next is well, once the sensing advances, we thought about what would happen earlier. I talked about the camera and the privacy invasion of the, the face recognition. But the, the um, resolution of the camera is over uh, 20 million today. And shall we just focus on the faces to talk about the security and the privacy? It's not the case. So in the future, latent threat includes the, the for example, the R biometrics such as the, the fingerprint. It could be stolen from the, the normal photos. And before the countermeasures, let me talk about this. In this slide, title, I showed you the, the my fingerprint. So that was uh, my piece 
picture with the, the normal camera from the, the three meters away, and then it's processed and restored as the, the finger print. So with the, the normal camera, you can steal the, the person's fingerprint information, and this thread was mentioned in the second half of 2016 and we are doing the, the security research so we can we need to show the countermeasures not just the talking about the threat one one example is the privacy visor glasses to prevent the face detection now we have to prevent the, the fingerprint remote capturing so biometric jammer this is a tool this is the, the special patterns uh, you wear over the, the fingerprint. The simplest solution is a wearing gloves. If you wear the gloves, and, and even if you, your photo is taken, your fingerprint is not stolen. But the, the, you use the fingerprint authentication on the smartphone, so we don't want to hinder that convenience. So biometric jammer, actually, for the touch uh, type of the, the authentication, there's no impact. But if the, somebody takes a photo uh, remotely, then you can really restore or steal the information. There were several prototypes. More advanced way is, the, the for example, the pseudo fingerprint pattern created by the computer can be covered over the fingerprint. You can't really recognize it. And the if the, the, it's processed by the, the adversaries, if you look at see the, the right up top, the, this pseudo fingerprint uh, comes up, then the, the, this fingerprint information cannot be stolen, so we can prevent the, the stealing the fingerprint photos. On the other hand, capacitive and the optical fingerprint sensors so if it's touch type, then you can adjust the, the density of ink and the pseudo fingerprint cannot be taken by the sensors. So if you want to use a touch type fingerprint sensors while preventing the, the stealing the print, fingerprint information from the, the remote capturing, we are able to realize this and there is no special processing in the fingerprint, so it's a protection on the, the user side. We studied some of the prototypes. As I mentioned earlier, we consider social implementation. This is another prototype. In consideration with various companies, we are seeking for the ways to implement the technology in the society. The technology I talked before, Privacy Visor and Biometric Jammer, are published in the a thesis, but also covered by various media more than 1,000 times, mainly in overseas. Such minor research is rarely covered by major media. It is very significant that this type of research went into a market product. I hope this technology is recognized as one of the necessity in information society. This is the slide I used to show you the overall overall picture before, please pay, pay attention to the pop bottom. Since many high-definition images are available and machine learning is advanced, such technology can cause security and privacy issues by combining and synthesizing face and biometric information. We started this research around in 2018. We started a research to detect the difference between a real human face and a computer-generated fake face in the cyber world, detection of fake media. Look at this slide. Is this fake or real? Oh, one picture is made by GAN, GAN or well-known machine learning tool, and this face does not exist. Do you know which is fake and real? Left is fake, and right is real. What about this picture? In this case, right face is made up by AI. Next is video. How about this? Here, right is fake, 
right person's face is re replaced by another person's face. In this case, you can see unnatural movement around her chin, so we still feel some difference compared with still image. But as time passes, we can expect fake videos will be also as natural as real. We call this deep fake. Deep fake emerged in around 2017. This case is simple. By combining autoencoders, a uh, face of subject A on right video is replaced by B's face, remaining natural facial expressions. The technology started to cause major issues since around 2017. It is a technology to replace person A's face with person B's face, a different identity maintaining actual facial expressions. There is another type of technology. This is from CVPR in 2016, four years ago. In this case, the target person's face, in this case former President Bush, is synchronized with another person's facial expressions in real time. This is also a big issue. In this case, the identity of the target is not changed, changed but this technology can force President Bush to speak whatever attacker want him to speak. Speech synthesis technology also very advanced. Voice and facial expressions of Mr. Bush were perfectly synthesized. When it was presented in 1916, it was just a technology for fun. However, this can be a threat for people because this technology can control our mind. As this technology can be a threat for all the people, before this slide is publicized, we propose the fake video det detection technology called Mesonet, made of four simple layers of CNN, first in the world, and followed by various other theses. This slide shows the revised version of our technology. Utilizing advanced technology called capsule network, cloned face can be detected with much higher care accuracy than the technology we developed in 2018. The model itself is hard to understand, so let me show you this one. In this de deep fake video, upper picture is a video where my face is replaced with Prime Minister Abe and the bottom one is vice versa. Both videos can be detected with very high accuracy by our technology. This required huge volume real and fake videos in learning. The accuracy is improved by effectively collecting data and improving models. This is the case of face-to-face. -face. Both videos show the same person, but contents are different. Facial expressions on the right is made up. Accuracy of the detection is also very high in this case as well. Insecurity, real or fake classification, is not everything. There will be multiple methods in deepfake to make up cloned faces. In 2019, there were already multiple ways. Not only the distinction between real and fake, expression, explanation is required, if possible, to show which areas are modified to make up clone faces in what ways. Some solution was made in a deep fake video detection technology based on multitask learning in 2019. This technology detects not only cloned faces, but try to find which areas are modified to make this face in high accuracy. Different ways like face-to-face, -face, deep face, and face swap will pick up different areas to modify original faces. By identifying the altered areas, we can understand which method is used for the cloned faces. In the future, combined with the speech synthesis, we can judge which method was used to make a specific cloned face. This is the actual example. In addition to the detection of real or fake, right video shows which areas are replaced. From this slide, I will explain technologies that we are researching right now. Those are all published in a thesis this year. 
I talked about technology to detect fake videos and show which areas are modified to users. Security is a never ending game. That means there will be adversaries or attackers to alter the result itself. This is called advanced adversar adversarial attacks, where very fine noise, which is hard for people to detect, is mixed in the fake data, and then result of the real will be changed to fake. Among the four top squares, leftist picture says real, and this is ground truth. So leftist one says real, and this is ground truth. However, by adding fine noise to this, the result will be altered to fake, and also can show modified areas, although the information itself is a fake, through input becomes false output. Look at four squares below. The ground truth of the left picture is fake. By adding noise, they can show altered information saying modified areas are hair, not face, although areas actually change the face. What's coming in the future will be a fight against such invisible fake media. What type of learning will be required to deceive adversary attack using machine learning? What should we do to detect it? Some part of our research will be focused on creating and detecting adversary attack samples. These are also documented in thesis for future study. Another is called master face. Let me explain. By applying machine learning, a clone face can match with multiple faces. It is more like a face version of master key which can open all the doors with a single key. This is also adopted in this year's conference. Such faces are synthesized by machine learning and a master face is generated. When this face is posted at face authentication, the face can match multiple persons. In some cases, without the knowledge, biometric authentication can be ineffective, like the traditional technology for fingerprint. Currently, huge amount of biometric information is disclosed to researchers and available to everyone. So we can make master face, master vein, and so on. Then the research I talked before is try something malicious utilizing the information from a face and a fingerprint of a target person. But this is more advanced. This can lead to generation of master biometric information that can match multiple persons, multiple persons biometric information synthesized from publicized information without any specific target information. Technology to detect such master biometric information will be very important in the near future. The next example is not about a video, but about natural language fake reviews. We research natural languages as well as images. In security, GPT-2, now GPT-3, BERT, or existing models and pre-trained models are disclosed. When attackers try fine-tuning using them, as you can find negative and positive reviews at the bottom left, when negative reviews are combined with machine learning as a feed, Many similar fake reviews can be mass made. In the past, such reviews are created via broker's request to writers. Now, machine learning can mass produce such negative reviews and post them so that positive or negative impacts can be made on the reputation of specific product. There can be such threat possible 
through the combination of existing models. The bar chart shows human evaluation of such views. We ask native and non-native speakers to read machine-made reviews. We ask them to pick up a review that sounds natural out of four questions, three of which are machine-made. All the bars show 25% corresponding to the chance rate. Results by native speakers are also about 25%. That means native speakers cannot make a distinction whether the reviews are fake or not. So it will be a threat for us if fake reviews are used in attacks. We are researching the way to detect them combining existing models and now finding nice results. Threats using natural languages are expected to increase. Since, since synthesis of natural languages advanced, there is a new potential th threat in the use of this. That means technology to detect such machine-made reviews will be also important in the near future. This is our thesis adopted in the recent workshop. This is also a type of fake. We try to make a biased news, one type of fake. This, there is a source news, and this also uses pre-trained trained model of machine learning. Using this, left-leaning news can be further left-leaning or vice versa. Or in the future, it will be also possible to change right-leaning to left-leaning. This is a try uh, to let machine to change bias. Bias and media will be very important point. Currently, focus on fake media is about quality, making uh, undetectable by people. But next point is how you can control the mind of targets. One way is the intentional creation of biased media. People who read right-leaning information might stick to left-leaning because of this article or switching from left to right, a threat of mind control. This is an investigation to verify how this can be done by machine. We are doing a research to detect such bias news. In the end, it will be important to show the results to users, such as this is the case, bias is enhanced or flipped in this media. We need to, need to assume that it will be very difficult for users to detect machine-made fake news. That means for the judgment also we need AI support so that you can know the media you see is a fake or not. And if it is a fake, you should know how the news is made up and biased. Clear explanation on this will be very important. This is my last slide. We think new threat in cybersecurity is controlling the mind of mass, not only individuals. So how are they doing this? For example, a man on the left would like to raise the share price of company A and give the request to attackers. Then the attacker group try to change and control the mind of targets via various media utilizing fake media creation, such as impact on displays, sound from speakers, robots, sense of touch in some cases, and try to give impacts on the mind of targets. So by controlling the mind of mass, not individuals, dramatic changes can be made. This can be a threat related to infodemic, often talked under the current pandemic situation. We think about a threat of fake media that can cause infodemic, 
controlling the mind of mass and inducing social disturbance. How can we avoid infodemic created by fake media? We would like to research on this topic as well. Thank you for your attention.